Welcome to Neff Talk Live. My name is Chris Cook. Today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of a Mac valve. Today I'm joined by Ethan Van Gessel. Ethan's our in-house Mac valve specialist. Ethan's going to get into the details of the components of the Mac valve. I'm going to hand it over to Ethan. Thanks a lot, Chris. Yeah, my goal here today is really just to kind of debunk some of the common misconceptions and myths about valves, um, as well as some of the misused terminology. So, for example, uh, in the field, I've had guys uh, say, hey, Ethan, I need to replace uh, a solenoid, when indeed they're referring to the entire valve itself. My goal here is really just to kind of break down each individual component, explain how they work together to perform a pneumatic function. Excellent. And kind of what I'm looking at here on the table, I see a whole bunch of different sizes and shapes. At the end of the day, is all we're really trying to do is redirect air at a specific volume? That's exactly right, Chris. Yep. When you boil it down, um, really all a valve is doing is directing air to different pathways to perform a pneumatic function. Excellent. Well, let's get to it. Thanks, Ethan. Absolutely. All right. Let's hop into the first main component of a valve, the valve body. So a valve body really performs three main functions. First, it provides a chassis with which to mount other components of the valve, such as the spool, maybe a pilot valve or a solenoid. The second thing it does is provide us with the air pathways and porting so that you can plumb this into an application. Last but not least, valve bodies usually provide some sort of mounting. In this case, we have a cast aluminum valve body with some through holes in it so that you can bolt this to a machine frame. Hopping into our next main component of a valve, the spools. As you guys can see, spools come in many different shapes, sizes, and styles as well. Every spool really has a couple main components. There's a machined metal shaft of some sort, and then some sort of sealer. In Mac's case, they use a bonded rubber spool. This rubber is bonded to the metal shaft and then machined precisely to fit inside the bore of the valve body. The way that it really works is that this spool acts on the bore of the valve body, being driven back and forth either by a solenoid or by a pilot valve, driving back and forth and directing air to the different flow paths or ports. Let me kind of show you how that works. Here we have a cutaway of a valve with a spool exposed. You can see here we have an inlet coming in this side of the valve was sealed off by this bonded rubber spool. When I actuate this valve, you can see that it allows air to flow from one side of the valve to the other. On the bottom, you can kind of tell that we have an inlet. When I act on it, we flow air to the outlet. All right, guys, let's hop into the next main component of a valve, the solenoid. So a solenoid resides typically near a pilot valve or in a direct operated function directly bolted to the valve body. Again, like a valve body, there are three main components to a solenoid. Those are first, the winding or coil, an armature, and last is some sort of electrical connection with which to bring your electrical signal into the solenoid. Solenoid's main function is to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. It does that through this coil creating an electromagnet which acts on the armature, then driving the spool back and forth to direct your air. All right, let's talk about a pilot valve since we've touched on it so many times before. This valve has what we call a pilot valve attached to it. The pilot valve has all the main components of a valve like we've discussed before, as a solenoid, a connection, some sort of valve body. The difference here is that this valve is used to drive a larger one. So here, when the armature is, is engaged via the electromagnet, we allow air to flow into this valve, acting on the main spool and driving it back and forth. The advantages of using a pilot valve as opposed to a direct operated valve where the solenoid drives the spool are this. You can get much more force by allowing that air pressure to drive the spool back and forth and Oftentimes, for, mechanic, for maintenance reasons, you can replace a pilot valve much more easily than unplumbing an entire larger valve. So there's a couple of advantages to using these. 
So to summarize, we have some main components of a valve. We have a valve body, spool, solenoid, and sometimes a pilot valve. Does it make sense how all these things kind of work together to make a valve function the way that it's supposed to? Yeah, definitely. So just to kind of recap, if I'm understanding this correctly, we've got power coming into the main solenoid, and that solenoid is either a direct shift or, I'm, or, or I've got what's called, as you mentioned, the pilot valve. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's causing an electromagnetic charge, which, which causes a shift. So it's either a direct shift or through the, the pilot valve itself, which that allows air into the main, main body of the valve. I'm shifting the spool, and that shifting is what's redirecting that air to go from, to take it from the body of the valve, and when that shift occurs, it's now being direct through the outlet of the body of that valve. Is that, do I have that right? That's exactly right, Chris. Yep. Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming in today, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you all for watching another Neff Talk Live. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the session, and uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>